Welcome back, episode 133 of Frederick Advice Givers with my friend Alina Steele with doTERRA. She was actually joined us in the very beginning of Frederick Advice Givers episode 12, so go back and check out her audio version. I think you were actually before I even had like the formatted questions, so mm. welcome back. Thanks, yeah. So we're actually sitting in our offices today, sometimes with small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, you know, they work out of their house, uh, they, 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 they work out in the field. Uh, they host parties at other people's houses, uh, so they don't have a strict storefront. So she came to our office today to shoot this interview. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you back and we get to share your story again. Yay. It's exciting. All right. So who are you? How do you describe yourself? And what's your origin story? Um, I am, I always like to call myself a shy extrovert. I always come across as extroverted. I really enjoy public speaking and getting up in front of people. Um, but really deep down inside, it makes me very nervous to talk to people, especially one-on-one. -on -one. So I do much better with large crowds. So, so that's the uh, opposite of most people. It is. It like, is. I, I can sit here and talk to you all day. If you get me up in front of like 10 people, I'm I you you cla the yeah. more people the easier it is really? yeah yeah so um it's very personal and stuff like that so i think making eye contact and um, when you have a large audience you can kind of like look around and not really look at so right. it's easier for me to do that so but i really enjoy impacting a large amount of people at the same time as well so cool so tell us about doTERRA and what you do doTERRA is an essential oil company um, that's been around for nine years that sells 100 percent pure therapeutic grade essential oils um, we use them for emotional benefits for physical benefits and healings um, support to the body things like that okay so we've got uh, somebody in our company that recently brought in oils to, to to here so i'm i'm fascinated so like what type of oils do you use for you know say i have anxiety so like what do you do how do you take the oils? Mm -hmm. And um, you said they're 100% natural, right? They're 100% pure. So um, there are a lot of companies out there who are making um, uh, oils. Mm -hmm. And so you can, I hate to pick on one of your really large stores like Walmart or maybe Bed Bath & Beyond are selling essential oils and it says 100% pure in there, but they'll say not to take them internally. Right. So when I advise people to take oils internally, I'm specifically talking about doTERRA oil. So we can use them internally. We can drink them in our water, um, like lemon in our water to help our digestive system right. um, for anxiety and stress and stuff like that. A lot of people know about lavender oil is really calming and soothing. Right. So we've got some blends for that. So drinking oils, putting them on topic where it hurts or using them aromatically like in a diffuser or just smelling them for emotional benefits okay. so a lot of uses awesome so why did you choose to settle on Frederick because I know you're not originally from this area nope I'm originally from Louisiana um, so I've been in Frederick well, I've been in Maryland for 15 years now. I just passed the 15 year mark. So I went to University of Maryland is what brought me to Maryland in the mm -hmm. first place and then right before I um, left, I think it was the semester before I graduated, I met my husband. Well, not at the time. I met this boy. Mm -hmm. And I told my parents that I was going to marry him. And I was going this to... This boy football player. This boy football player, so I've yes. Kn I've known her husband probably <laughs> since we... Well, he's always bigger than me. But probably, I was this <laughs> tall and he was this tall. <laughs> right, right. So our, yeah. our families are our friends and uh, his, his parents and his family run a farm in Carroll County. My parents run a farm here. So we've known the Steels forever. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was a very nice looking football player. Yeah. So I got stuck in Maryland because of him. Awesome. So, yeah. All right. So let's take it back to human level here. So we our, our listeners can get to know you on a more intimate human level. What's the last purchase that you splurged on either for yourself or your family? That was a hard one um, to think about. It, I think it was our house, you know, okay. when you bring that up, you know, um, you being our real estate agent, um, we surprisingly found that house online. At 6.30 in the morning it's, when I got the call. Yeah, yeah, and well, that's that's when, how long, Mike actually found it around 5 a.m. because that's what time he gets up on Saturdays. Um, so, so yeah, he said, oh, found our dream home. Uh, after we had settled, we would never sell our other house, right. you know, so that was... All that happened, I think, in two weeks and was pretty mind blowing. And we love, love that house. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, what hobby or interest, Amanda, could you spend hours doing? I think public speaking okay. um, of some kind. So, you enjoy um, it on that level that you don't mind. I love doing it. So, what do you talk about? 
Like, you... um, so I have a mom's group that I go to um, once a week. So okay. sometimes it's a little a little Bible study, a little mom's group, and just sitting around and talking with other people about how stressful it is to be a stay-at-home mom and to be a parent and encouraging them. So I'll you know speak a little bit there. Um, we have a Bible study that we do once a week. So I actually just taught about essential oils from the Bible specifically for that group. Um, I've been asked to um, speak, I don't know, I just various various organizations that I'm a okay. part of. Eventually, it seems like I do. get up. I'm just kind of like, oh, I, I could help with that. Do you, do, you, do you, everybody else is scared to get up in front of and talk <laughs> with everybody? I could totally do that. I love, I love practicing and sitting and rehearsing and feeling like I know the knowledge that I could spout it off at any time. So you, you know, do research so. before you speak? Mm -hmm. okay. Always. So when, yeah. I, when I speak and I don't like doing it at all, I kind of go more off the cuff. Mm -hmm. So you, you, do you, do you read, I like understanding. I don't do a script. Okay. If anything, I'll have bullet points, but I just so that I don't forget to say all the things that I think are important. But I think being authentic, like I'm not going to speak perfectly and right. I talk with my hands and um, I like to walk around. So I usually will come back to a podium or something like that or walk with an index card. But I like to be a, a real person and, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. And I say, right. um, sometimes a little bit too much and, and stuff like that, although I work on that. But I like to have the research so that I have the knowledge. And then a lot of times you end up with questions. I want to be able to answer questions and be knowledgeable, but it just, it gets me excited to stand up in front of people. Well, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's, it's, so, it's something. Yeah. And, you, and it gets you adrenaline. When I know when I yeah. speak in front of the impact club and we have 200 mm -hmm. members there mm -hmm. getting up in front of the stage, I always have kind of, so I don't rehearse, but I have an outline of what I want to talk about that mm -hmm. evening or how I want to present the charities that, that, that come. Right. But it is, it's exhilarating. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's a rush. World. Yeah. It's a rush for sure. Yes. All right. So when you wake up in the morning, like what's your motivation? What's inside you that drives you to get out and start your day and help others? So when I think about that's my why, mm -hmm. you know, right. why, why do I get up? Um, and that was something I really dived into last year. I had been selling doTERRA for two years and was profitable to an extent, but I thought, you know, in the days when it really gets hard, why do I want to do this? Do I want to still do this? You know, so when I get up in the morning, I think about that core feeling and public speaking plays into it a little bit. But when I think about impacting, impacting a lot of people all at one time and thinking that it maybe it'll be about oils, maybe it'll be about my faith, maybe it'll be about something I don't even know about. But when I think about standing on stage, and talking to a whole bunch of people and thinking that I'm going to impact their lives and I'm going to change their lives somehow for the good and that they're going to leave and go, wow, like that was, that was impactful for me. And, right. and that changed my life or it changed a part of my life that that's why I get up and talk cool. every day. So, yeah. Cool. So you've been doing this for how long? Um, three years in January. I've been selling essential oils, been using them almost five. Cool. So yeah. what's a piece of advice or a shortcut that you would give somebody just starting out in business? Cause you are, a true business owner. You're a true entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't sell your oils, you don't have people that you do your uh, your shows mm -hmm. that buy your oils from you. You don't make money. So mm -hmm. you're a true entrepreneur. So what's a piece of advice or a shortcut that you can give somebody just starting out? It could be specifically in your industry or not, but a piece of advice that you've learned as a shortcut. Um, something that I didn't do at the beginning that has been impactful for me the last year and a half is mentoring. Okay. Finding someone to mentor me, someone that I talk to on a regular basis, it helps with accountability and just someone to give back to you and say, I hear what you're struggling with, here's some advice, kind of been there, done that. And then that person also encouraged me to find someone to mentor. Mm -hmm. um, and the person that I mentor is actually not in business at all. It's just a personal mentor. But again, someone that I get to pour back into them and say, I hear what you're struggling with. I've right. been there, I've kind of done that. You know, Let me help you or give you some ideas. And sometimes it's just a listening ear. And I found that one, accountability is really helpful, having someone keep track of you, having someone to call on the days that are really hard when you feel like you want to quit and they say, remember what your why is? Remember why you do this every day? Remember how it was yesterday? That, I think, is really, when you try to do business by yourself, it's it's a lot more difficult. Exactly. So I yeah. think doing having a community is the, really... The community is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's having that support, you know, because not every day is great, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you see people posting and it looks like all rainbows and unicorns, but it's not, it's not, it's not, and, you know, whether it's down times or it's up times, it's good to have somebody to, to share that 
a great moment with, and it's mm -hmm. awesome to have somebody that can, a shoulder to cry on, or you know, ask them, you know, that somebody that maybe has been through that experience, and they can give you a shortcut. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the flip side of that question, what's a bad piece of advice or something that somebody told you that hasn't helped you um, that you could give our audience as, as something not to do? Yeah. Um, I think being in a direct sales industry or maybe any industry um, when you have other people doing the same thing as you're doing, you know, so I have uh, people have been selling doTERRA longer than I have and they give me advice and then you take it and you try to do it exactly the way that they do it. And that's not necessarily, no two people are alike. No two people are exactly the same. So if someone says, here's my way of doing things, right. I'm going to take that advice, but then I need to tailor it for myself. So the things I've tried to say exactly as somebody else, and I try to practice that script and say it just the way that that mentor said it, or just the way that I heard that person, it doesn't go over well. And I think some of that is lack of authenticity, you right. know? So I want to take advice from other people, but then I want to make it my own. Well, what part of that really feels like it fits with me and what part is not and it's okay because that person is so successful you want to be just like them but they're successful because they're doing it their own way so exactly you yeah gotta mold everything that you're doing for yourself yeah so taking advice but don't try to be like somebody else try to be like yourself so in the last three years what's a choice you've made or a decision you've made that has helped bring you to today I think the mentoring is a big thing. Growing yourself, self-development self mm -hmm. is a big thing. Constantly reading books or listening to books or, um, you know, in inadvertently that gives you advice. Um, how to, like, find your why. Like reading Simon Sinek's book, Why, was right. one of the reasons I decided I need to figure out what is this. I need a I need a deeper driving force, you know. So that was a really big book. And then reading like Three Feet from Gold is amazing. And then Napoleon. I mean, just just so many books. I read and read and read every day. And being dedicated to that kinds of thing, I think really. And again, it doesn't have to be business specific. It can be just for personal growth. Is going like I want to be a better person. Right. And if you just sit around all day not doing anything, you're not really going to get better. You have to challenge yourself. Um, and do that self-development. It's totally really good. Totally agree with reading. Totally agree. Yeah. I, I, in school, like, I think I read one book from kindergarten through yeah. high school all the way. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, behind us over here, we've got yeah. 500, 600 books that I've read in business, mm -hmm. relationship, storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Kid rearing. Yes. <laughs> a lot of kid rearing books. Exactly. A lot of those, I'm really surprised at how much it has to do with the parent changing and not so much the kids. You read them, you're like, wait, this is more about me than it is about the kid changing their yeah, behavior. So, so funny story, <laughs> not necessarily kid, but dog. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Laser, our puppy, <laughs> is very needy and, and everything. So we had um, a dog trainer come in and, mm -hmm. you know, Laser, when people come, he likes to jump on him, you know, meet him and all that kind of fun stuff. And then he likes to always be like the center of attention. Mm -hmm. But having 15 minutes with the dog trainer, it was basically us were the ones that weren't doing it correctly, you know, mm -hmm. and just in a week of having her, her here and, and taking her steps and guidance, like he's changed a hundred percent. Right. Because we're now doing the correct things, mm -hmm. which is, it was pretty cool. Communication. It yeah. really goes back to how are you communicating and are you getting your point across? And exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you are episode 133. You, I've interviewed 132 other people. Sitting across from you, or talking to you on the phone when we did the audio interview uh, on Skype, I got to ask all the questions. I've gained so much from asking other people questions. Mm -hmm. So I want to flip the script. Ask me a question, anything personal, professional that you have. What do you do to take care of yourself? What's your self-care every day? Self-care every day. How do you take wow. care of yourself? Because so, I know you do self-development. But... That's a great question. Um, self-care. I need to do more of it, uh, first of all, uh, health-wise, as far as running or working out or stuff. I, I don't do a lot of that right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let, yeah, let's go this route. So I, I coach my kids. I coach all the sports they play. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm out there running around doing that. So I don't block out time during my, my day to go and work out. Mm -hmm. um, but I am actively involved with my kids. Um, Self-care mentally, like you had just men mentioned, mm -hmm. which I think is also a component. You know, you got to mm -hmm. have your mind moving forward right. um, is is talking to other business owners almost on a daily basis and or reading. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. That's a good question. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That was a good question. I thought of that. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So 
What failure or, or loss has helped mold you and set you up for success? Could be personal, could be business, could be anything. Yeah, I think um, balancing family time. Um, there was a period of time over the summer where I was working a lot and you think, okay, well, the kids are out of school. We've got more time. I traveled back to Louisiana, you know, for almost a month. And when you're down there, you're trying to see all of the family that you can see and run the business too. Like I have family and friends and stuff like that down there that are using essential oils and I want to be able to support them. And phone calls are great, but I love being in, in, in person, right. you know, and being able to support people in person and a couple of people who are building down there, you know, so my kids kind of came back from that and were like, Hey, we're going to act up a whole bunch yeah. because you don't pay any attention to us anymore. And not that I wasn't caring for them, but it's not the same as like sitting down and reading a book with them or playing with them nearly as much as they had been accustomed to. Um, so that was something kind of brought to light. I think it was around August where I was like, business is way too good right now and family knife is right. not balanced. It's not like it was bad, but it wasn't balanced. So I went back to the drawing books and thought I need to be a little bit more concentrated in how much time I'm spending with doTERRA, what things are, what actions are really profitable and what are worth the time and how much am I like doing too much that I could be spending time with my kids. And when I spend time with my kids, I don't need to be like checking my phone or you know what, that text message could probably wait another half an hour, you know, right. and I want to be focused on the family and make sure that they know that I am present and that I'm here with them and that they know that I'm spending time with them. So that was, um, a very uncomfortable time for me thinking, you know, I went through a little bit of a guilt going like mommy guilt and going like, oh, my kids are suffering. Like it's terrible. I haven't been paying attention to them. I feel bad. And I was like, no, you know what? This is just life. And right. there are people who work too much. And I have the benefit of being able to control how much I work and how much I put into my business and my family. So I brought that back into balance. And that's a fine line with being an entrepreneur and a business owner is you want to, because well, one, you really enjoy, enjoy what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing that you mm -hmm. enjoy what you're doing. But two, if you enjoy what you're doing too much, yeah. then it, it, it spills into your personal life and you're working all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, my kids are a little bit older than your kids. They kind of understand when the phone rings and it's a client, they need to be quiet because dad's going to take that call. Mm -hmm. And it could be, um, it, it, it's all in how you frame it with your kids because I am the one coaching their sports. Right. You know, I am the one that runs them around. So they understand I do spend a lot of time with them and I try to be as there mm -hmm. mentally as much as I can. Right. I don't always do a good job of it. And so yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Not perfect. As long as we, I think it being called to my attention so that I could pay attention to it, right. you know, going like I probably still miss mess up, but right. it's okay. Now I can give myself grace for that and going like now I can refocus and know to pay attention to it. Right. So, so where do you see yourself? and or your business, we can go either way here, in three years and 10 years? Um, in three years and 10 years, my kids will be older. <laughs> I have a six-year-old and two four-year-olds. So, I, so you're three, about th at that age. So you, It's very close. Like we're getting the, right. the little ones will be kindergartners next year. So I think there will a lot more time for me in my business and a, a, a lot less time, you know, having to pick them up half day, you know. Right. But I think about... Um, some freedom in that, being able to continue to grow the business. You know, my business is very profitable. Um, and right now, I'm I'm not having to say no, but I'm having to put some people off and say, you know, I can't do that right now. Can we do it in two weeks? Or right. just knowing that there's that family balance or, hey, my kids have to come with me because if you want to do something at one, I've got two, you right. know, that are with me in the afternoons, you know. And, and that's a challenge. And I think, um, again, it, that growing, I think there's something to being a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home parent, realizing that your kids are going to be away from home, give you a little bit more time. Um, but I see the business, like I said, in the last three years, being able to do it when I had 18-month-old twins and now having four-and-a-half-year-old twins, like that three years has changed a lot. <laughs> and I would expect the same thing to continue. Okay. Um, and I hope to be speaking more publicly, not necessarily with essential oils, but just, you know, I see myself continuing to move up in that realm and being able to do a lot more public speaking and stuff like that. So, so, so is that the 10 year goal for public speaking? Probably. Okay. Yeah. I think on a timeline, like I have to be respectful for the fact that I still have little kids. So I think farther, farther down the road, possibly, um, maybe someone will pay me to public speak one day. I'm not sure. That'd but be awesome. That's a, that's part of the dream and the why. Cool. So, yeah. All right. So how would our listeners find out more about you, about their Terra, um, 
talk to you. Mm -hmm. So you can go to, there's a couple different ways, doTERRA.com slash Alina Steele. Um, I'll spell my name for you, A-L-E-E-N-A, and then Steele is S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E. It's got an E on the end. Um, I also, I'm on Facebook, you know, Facebook slash Essential Oils with Alina Steele, and then my email address is doTERRA, D-O-T-E-R-R-A, with Alina Steele at gmail.com. Awesome. So, yeah. So uh, Alina is obviously a friend of ours. Um, she is the, one of the most genuine, nicest people <laughs> I have ever met. Um, so if you want to find out more about essential oils, um, if you want to talk religion, mm -hmm. right? Sure. You're, you're big. Yeah. You yeah. A lot of faith. We have a lot of faith. We go to a church here in Frederick and um, I am part of the healing rooms. So that's something right. that I do twice a month as uh, praying for people for healing and things like that. So, awesome. yeah. Yeah. So she, she doesn't fake it. She's, she's genuine. <laughs> she's, her heart is as big as, as, as big as, as big as Marilyn. She's, <laughs> she's awesome. We love her. So I hope you enjoyed episode 133 of Frederick and Vice Givers, Alina Steele doTERRA, and we are out. Mm -hmm.